Hey, what is up guys, Yelling Monster here with another replay from Reddit. So thank you Milk for sending it in and actually letting me cast this game. Uh, yeah, let's get into the draft. Looks like we have Invoker mid. Looks like he's gonna be going for the uh, Exhort build. We'll see how that turns out. Lion probably gonna be the 5. Not quite sure, could also be the 4, we'll see. Uh, Lich, either the 4 or the 5. Bristleback in the off lane and then the Bloodseeker in the safe lane. Pretty cool, pretty cool draft. Uh, let's look at the Dire. We have Void Spirit mid. Hmm. Actually, I'm not quite sure if it's... Oh, okay, never mind. It's gonna be Void Spirit mid. I see the bottle queued up and stuff. Yeah, it could also be the Ricky mid, but uh, I didn't see the rest of the draft, so it definitely makes more sense to have the Void Spirit mid. Centaur off lane. Hmm. I'm not sure which one's gonna be the 4, but probably gonna be the Vengeful. And give a little more farm priority to the Willow. We'll just have to see how the lanes go out. Let's see if the um, Dire safe laner has a stick. Yeah, he does. So he's ready for the Bristleback lane. The Bloodseeker not even bothering with the runes. Just gonna stand in lane and uh, wait for the creeps to come in. The battle begins. Bounty rune spawn in. Looks like it's gonna be two aside. No, no shenanigans uh, for first blood or incursions or anyone trying to sneak the triangle runes. So you know, two for two. So oh, it looks like it is gonna be the vengeful four and then the willow five. Interesting. Um, I, I think that you would want to give a little bit more farm priority to the willow, since in my opinion, I think. This hero can do quite a bit, especially once he um, she gets her bedlam. Uh, it's actually like it's a way too much damage. Like you can solo, you can basically solo course with this ability if they're, they're low enough or they're squishy enough. So, yeah, let's see. Oh, it's gonna be the lion, um, the lion five, and then the lich is gonna be the five. Looks like I'm not sure what he's doing. Um, could be AFK. I'm not really sure. See you over to the mid lane. Actually, this Void Spirit not doing too bad. Against the Invoker, considering it's an Edsword Invoker. And the damage differential is quite big. It's like 60-something, uh, almost 70 damage against the 66 of the Void Spirit. But as the levels go on and uh, he gets more points in the Edsword, it should be harder to last it. Uh, since he's going to get more damage from it. Uh, looks like the Lich has decided to join his boy in lane. Looks like we have a wand coming from the Willow in her career. And so for the Ricky. So they're gonna be ready for this Bristleback once he um once he dies this Ricky or this Dark Willow, they can almost pop that wand and try to turn things around. Or at least use it just to survive. Nice little last hit. This Ricky is actually last hitting pretty well considering it's a... Uh, so against a Bristleback, melee cores don't really like uh, going against Bristleback too much just because of, you know, the cool spray spam and then I'm sure once the Bristleback hits level 3 or 4 he's gonna get uh, points into the uh, nasal goo. And once that happens, it's, wow, the slows and then the minus armor from the nasal goo, it's gonna be quite hard to, to actually try and fight. But as I'm focusing over here at the top lane, I miss a buck kill at the bottom. So let's rewind a little bit. And see what actually happened down here. I'm surprised that... Oh no. Centaur stepping up. Does have the boots. Runs a little bit in the wrong direction and eats the... Um, eats the blood right. And then the stun from the lion is enough to finish off the kill. And then onto the eventual spirit they go. The tower's aggroing onto the creeps. Now it's aggroing onto the bloodseeker. But it doesn't really matter. Sunstrike is going to be there to secure the kill. Let's see Kirin pops a blood right to try to get the kill, but he did not expect this invoker being so skilled. And at the same time, we have <laughs> Ricky going down over at the top lane. So let's have a little rewind there, maybe a little bit more. Boom. Okay. Because, yeah, as soon as I started going down bottom, they started going uh, on top. So we have the kill happening at bottom. Dark Willow dropping a little bit low. This Ricky trying to go for the Lich, the Gaze, he gets the kill until the Lich, tries to jump away, has four cool strikes on him. Oh, yeah, he's dead. Maybe trying to push it a little bit too much and then this Bristleback, one more quill spray, dead. Yeah, double kill. 
Does he have a... No, he doesn't. He does end up going down for it, but I think you're pretty happy about that. You get the kill and the XP and you only die to the tower, so... They, these heroes don't even get the full gold and they don't get any of the XP, so... Pretty worth it for the Bristleback, for sure. A little bit unfortunate there that uh, the Rookie did very well, you know, focusing down the Lich. The squishier support with uh, less health, but then sticking around for a little bit too long, maybe thinking they could try to turn around the kill until the Bristleback, but he just had way too many cool, uh, cool stacks on him. Like, uh, he had four by the time, before the time he went down. So, in that, in that fifth stack, just uh, way too much damage for him to deal with and ends up going down. A little bit unfortunate, but at least he gets a kill on the support, so... It's okay, but you definitely don't want to be dying like that anymore over by the mid lane. Void Spirit taking a little bit of damage. Thought just had the Sun Strike, very nice. Looks like Invoker is going to pop this off, so he's going to be okay. No time has been completed. He does, he does have a Bounty Rune and hmm, a little bit of a... A little bit of a, um, like, I wouldn't say blunder, but like mistake, you know, taking the bounty rune away from your mid laner. Like, your mid laner has, he's very low on regen, and he doesn't have his bottle. He could always, you know, go into the triangle, fill up his bottle, and regen up a bit. Water runes are going to spawn in, so if he tries to fill his bottle, the water runes are going to be there. Regardless of that kill over the top, like farming, uh, Rick is still farming pretty well. So uh, at least uh, Dyer have that going for them. This Bloodseeker has not died, but he's not doing too hot on the last hits. He's uh, falling a little bit behind. You definitely want to see around the 5 minute mark, around 25 last hits. And by 10 minutes, you probably want to have around 50. And this Ricky is doing pretty damn well. Like, if you have 25 last hits by 5 minutes, you're you're in a you're in good track to having a decent uh, amount of farm coming out of the laning phase. Interesting build by the Invoker. Actually, putting a pull uh, points into the Wex, just uh, you know, a casual points into a Wex so you can cast uh, um, so you can cast more spells. Usually, I like I'm used to seeing this casual point into the Wex more into like level nine, maybe level seven, somewhere around those levels, but Definitely earlier than I would expect, uh, you know, the casual point into the works. We'll see how it turns out, if he's able to make anything out of it. Centaur, just gonna get stunned and sucked. Lion things. Ricky does have his Orb of Corrosion ready. I wonder what build he's gonna try to go for this Ricky. I wonder if he's gonna go, you know, the old school Battle Fury build, which... Has seen some success recently, but I think uh, it was more successful in the past before the the nerf onto the axe. Uh, the, his uh, his shards actually pretty cool, so yeah, I'm curious to see. Yeah, he goes for the fusel blade, very good item, and this Ricky wants to get involved early. Somebody's getting pinged. Oh, I see. That's a world runner. Dropped pretty low. This void spirit's hanging around with. Not a lot of mana and uh, about half HP. And this keep this invoker just keeps right clicking on him. Okay, he's gonna go check for the room. Very nice. Remnant. Very nice. Tornado. Cold snap. Meatball. And he doesn't get the he doesn't get the haste rune. The invoker managed to snatch that and gets the kill onto the void spirit. A little bit unfortunate there from the void spirit. Dropping a little bit too low, like sticking around the lane, dropping a little bit too low and not going for the rune earlier on. By the time he went for the rune, the invoker had caught on to the, what the uh, Void Spirit was trying to do. Then just went to the... Uh, just went to the uh, to the rune and then ended up killing him because he was just so low. And how many points into the ether? Yeah, one point into the ether remnant, that's not enough uh, for disable, long enough for disable for you to actually try to snatch that. So a little bit unfortunate there. Let's have a look over at the bot lane. Stun, blood right. That's a really nice setup actually. <laughs> I think he even popped the dust. A little bit unfortunate there, it's like there's not much the vengeful spirit can do there. Uh, not level six yet, still level three against uh, almost level six blood seeker. And the uh, the spike into the into the blood right is just too much damage. He has got two points in it. So, what's that? 160 pure damage. 
Yeah. Uh, looks like I guess Bully is gonna TP mid, fill up his bottle. I think that's what he did. I'm not quite sure. Oh, 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 oh. I am missing kills everywhere. Wow, Bloodseeker was actually quite low, yeah. Like, uh, he was just farming around pretty low. Oh, that was maybe a little bit too much. A little bit of a go on to the Invoker, but the Invoker is pretty fine. He's got the regen. It's Bloodseeker farming on pretty low HP. I mean, this is definitely what you want to be doing when you're this low on HP. Just go to the neutrals, hit the neutrals, and try to heal up from them. But maybe this neutral is a little bit too strong. Maybe you should try to. <laughs> wow, he doesn't even. Okay, so I, I thought he died to the centaur. I didn't even see it was to a neutral creep. But yeah, maybe try to clear the easy camp first. Uh, heal up a little bit first, and then try to go to the hard camp. Or even like uh, pulling the creep wave a little bit further back. And keeping your distance from the from the centaur could have worked. Sunstrike connecting onto the Vengeful Spirit. Tornado. I am. I'm, I'm not sure if that tornado connected or if it was the last hit that actually finished off the kill. Regardless, he gets the kill. Oh, spike onto the Void Spirit. Void Spirit this guy's up. A little bit of trouble. Does have no mana, but looks like a TP is coming in from the Willow to try to save him. Meatball is gonna come down. This Willow is taking quite a bit of damage. It looks like she's gonna end up going down. Nice little one sticks to save her there, so she's actually gonna be a-okay, those uh, that magic one actually doing work for her, very nice. Very nice TP rotation by the Willow to bail his Void Spirit out of trouble, that Void Spirit had basically had no mana and not a lot of health. This, bo yeah, this Void Spirit needs to be filling his bottle a little bit more, because a lot of the times that I'm looking over at him, he's um, pretty low on HP and mana, and this is definitely a hero. I mean, sure, like not so much the health, but you definitely want to have mana on this hero just so that you can farm, or if you get ganked like this, you can get away. Luckily for him, Lion's only level 5, so there's no finger available, so it should be A-OK. -okay. Fairy Trinket for both uh, both sides. Oh, Sunstrike. Nice, uh, nice sunstrike by the by the invoker. Actually, like he basically had no vision. It was just guessing that the voice spirit would be farming this camp, and he was. Finally, voice spirit picks up the illusion rune and manages to fill up his rune, his uh, bottle. So now he has a little bit more mana, a little bit more health to work around. Meanwhile, Ricky, pretty farming up, pretty happy up top, just farming away. Centaur is going to end up going down, probably ruptured use or something along those lines, so let's have a look. Stun, Blood Rite, Sucky Sucky, Rupture, Sunstrike as well connecting, enough damage to bring him down, very nice. This Bloodseeker, even though he wasn't farming the greatest, he's getting the kills. He's got two kills and two assists compared to, what, Zeriki? What does he have? Yeah, one kill, one death, one assist. So you can definitely tell the difference there. Even though the Ricky, in my opinion, had was playing the lane better, just because the the way he was farming and stuff. This Bloodseeker just, you know, Bloodseeker's Bloodseeker. He's gonna be able to get kills much earlier on because of his uh, the innate abilities that he has, and also the the blood right into the into the spike was pretty good setup. Regent Rune Bottle for the Void Spirit, that's a very nice one. He's gonna pop it, looks like he's gonna try to make a move onto bottom. Realizes that the Bloodseeker is like, being uncontested, he's getting away with way too much. Oh, he's gonna try to juke it into the trees. Ether Remnant, connects, stomp off the mark. Blood Rite is gonna come down, the Aether Step, actually not connecting and dealing the amount of damage. And looks like they're just gonna back up. Wow, uh, I definitely think they could probably gonna go for this kill invoker has no TP and I'm not sure okay only the supports have TP but even though even though the, the supports would have TP'd I definitely think oh they're gonna see that D word nice a little bit unfortunate there for the Dark Willow getting his uh, ward D warded like immediately but yeah I definitely think they could have dove in onto the oh my bad I definitely think they could have dove the Bloodseeker, he was pr pretty low, he had no mana, and the only people that actually had TPs were the supports. 
and between the Void Spirit and the Centaur, I think you could chunk down the supports pretty easily. A little bit of a missed opportunity there, but it is what it is. Special Spirit trying to leech uh, EXP from mid, trying to get his level 6, but Cold Snap, Tornado, Meatball, gonna be more than enough damage to actually bring him down. He does have the tome ready, so he should be um, level six soon. And he buys the. Did he have the infused raindrops before? I'm not quite sure. If he had them beforehand, oh my god, so many kills happening. Uh, boom. Cool. That's how it looks. These. I'm oh, just getting gone on. I'm literally just getting gone on. Gaze. Not enough. Tricks of the trade. Enough to finish him down. Blinks over to the uh, creeps. Ether Remnant connecting, nice, onto the lion. Bramble. Curse Crown and Stomp. That's a dead lion. Very nice. And this uh this Bloodseeker actually teeping into the lane. I'm pretty sure the I mean I definitely think it will be worth an attempt for the dire heroes to try to dive this. Invoker does have his TP on off cooldown, so they might want to be a little bit careful if they choose to go for this. We'll see. Lich is TPing over, Rupture coming down to the Centaur, Centaur just running around. Terrorize is going to be off the mark, looks like the Centaur is going to go down to the Rupture. Curse Crown connecting onto the, uh, onto the Bloodseeker but no follow up coming through so it looks like they're just going to back up. Lion TPing over as well. DD over by the bot lane, looks like um, Void Spirit is going to be picking that up. Very nice DD bottle for the Void Spirit. I, it's actually going to pop it immediately. But looks like he just wants the regen. Doesn't want actually want to use the DD for any place or anything. This Bristleback's been, um, been pretty much uncontested. No one from the, from the Dire has actually come up here to try to kill the, kill the Bristleback or anything like that. And I don't see any urns on the side of the Dire. So they're going to have... A little bit of damage issues bringing this bristle back down, especially in the right now in the early portions of the game where you know he has a vanguard and has quite a bit of region, and your magic damage actually quite limited. Like besides the dark willow, you don't have a lot of magic damage. So yeah, we'll see how that goes going into the future. So look onto the mid lane, DD onto the voice spirit, Ether Remnant connects, Curse Crown coming through, Ether Step gonna be enough to finish off the kill. Very nice kill onto the lion there. Simvoker has his uh, orchid completed, so I, and I'm not sure the the dire has seen it. So this void spirit needs to be a little bit careful because if he gets orchided, I think he's pretty dead. But he does have the support of his vengeful spirit there, so we'll see. And also the willow. So this is not an easy kill by any means. Looks like a bristleback TP coming over. Ether remnants. Void spirit is silenced up. Meatball off the mark actually, but Deafening Blast enough damage and then the Orchid Burn. It's gonna be enough to finish off the kill and now it looks like they're onto the Eventual Spirit. Sunstrike is gonna connect. That's quite a hefty amount of damage to help the kill go along and double kill for the Bristleback. Looks like uh, he's finally gonna get a point to the Nasal Goo. Stampede gonna get popped. It's like uh, it's literally just for the center runner to get away. Blood right, double edge, not quite enough. Radiants are gonna start pushing onto this tier one. It's like they're gonna collect it. Bristleback just trying to uh, use his uh, <laughs> use his bristleback to farm up the creep wave, but the proc's not really quite being there. And another tip coming onto the Void Spirit. I think he tried to gank the uh, the Invoker. Actually, I'm not quite sure. Let's have a little rewind there. Oh no, he tried going for the Bloodseeker, but hmm, Is Bloodseeker just want to run away. Yes, Blood Rites, and then the Void Spirit is like, nope, not happening. And that's how the tip the tip came through. Yeah. A little bit unfortunate there. His Void Spirit not having a great time right now. Looks like he is going to be going for the Yule Scepter. Very nice item, especially against the Orchid. But wow, nice, nice Sun Strike. And this dude, everyone's tipping the Void Spirit. 
Terrorize is gonna come through, it's gonna connect onto the invoker. It looks like Ricky is gonna show up, We're gonna try to get the kill onto the Lich. It's gonna be successful. Looks like that's gonna be a 2 for 2. Ricky jumping onto the invoker. There's no detection, so it looks like the invoker is gonna be a okay. Bristle back in the midst of things. Actually diving for the centaur. It's gonna get the kill onto the centaur. There's not much that Ricky can do actually. Oh, it's a little bit sketchy, yeah. Ricky needs to be a little bit careful. But if he reinitiates back into the invoker, he should be able to get the kill because this invoker has no more ghost walk. Uh, ghost walk is on cooldown, but it looks like he's just gonna be content to farming the creep wave. Oh no, dust, rupture. Tricks as a trade, very nice, dodging out the, the blood ride. Actually, they didn't manage to dodge it, it was just... Oh, that's so unfortunate, just a split second too early with the tricks of the trade, and actually by the time he lands back down, he eats the blood ride as well. A little bit unfortunate there, losing the Ricky like that, definitely definitely not good. Oh, this is my bad, I should have said switch to net worth uh, quite a while ago. Like, yeah, Ricky is in the top net worth there. Him dying there is a pretty big kill for the Radiant for sure. Sunstrike, enough to finish off the kill. Oh, this Bristleback isn't quite deep, it's behind tier 2s. He is getting everything. Oh, here comes the... The Bedlam. What? 77 HP, no way! But the Ricky is gonna jump in, he's gonna find the kill onto the Invoker. So, even though they lose 3 heroes and they don't really quite kill the Bristleback, they get the kill onto the Invoker. They really want this Bristleback so bad, but you, you just don't have the damage. Like, unless this Ricky jumps in and starts clicking him for quite a bit, like, uh, you're, not, you're not bringing this Bristleback down. We saw how close it was they were to bringing the Bristleback down with the Bedlam. But, just, you know, no urn, no nothing, no no way to really stop his regen going, and he just keeps regening through all the damage that they're dealing to him. The bright side is that they did bring down the invoker, and it looks like uh, this Ricky is onto the lion as well now. Is he gonna get the kill? Oh, one more right click, stun. Luckily, this Bloodseeker has no mana, so this Ricky is actually gonna be a-okay. This, this Bristleback in the middle of things, going for this Vengeful Spirit. Looks like this Vengeful Spirit is gonna end up going down. Ether Remnant not quite connecting, and yeah, that's gonna be the death of the Vengeful Spirit. Definitely a very sad uh, Vengeful Spirit game. It's like, uh, you have this Bristleback just constantly just spitting at you and... Pushing his quills onto you, and you're pretty, you're a quite squishy hero that doesn't have um, like a good escape mechanism or anything like that. You're not particularly fast either, so yeah, definitely it feels bad. Invoker going onto the centaur, say. Orchid, meatball, deafening blast, more than enough damage to actually bring him down. He, the centaur really only has the vanguard, so he has, he has pretty much no way to mitigate some of the magic damage coming through his way. Let's see this Ricky. Oh, is it bugged? Yep, it's bugged. So Ricky's gonna be forever be a fish for until the next time he gets hexed or for the rest of the game. So yeah, nice New Arcana. Let's see. Oh, this lion close to his blink. That's gonna be quite dangerous for the for the dire. Once this lion gets his blink. He's gonna be able to initiate from much further away and set up for for many more kills. Centaur, Tornado, Orchid. He's gonna be okay. Sounds try actually almost connecting. So the rest of the Radiant Dire Heroes are gonna come through. Wow. Lich just melts to two clicks of the Ricky. So I actually connect onto the Ricky? No, it doesn't. The random dust doesn't actually connect. Nice little stack for the invoker there to farm. Bloodseeker, what is he going for? Basher afterwards? Okay, very nice. Ooh, this is Bloodseeker needs to be careful. Silence. Ether Remnant. They get the kill onto onto the Bloodseeker, very nice. And they give it to the Ricky as well, which is even nicer. You know, your your top not your top net worth hero getting uh, the kill on the enemy carry. Very nice. Say so the Ricky is gonna be going for the Manta next. Very nice item. You can you know you get dusted? You pop the Manta. You dispel the dust. Very nice. 
and then he's gonna be going for the BKB afterwards. Very nice. You definitely, you definitely want to be running around, not really caring about the the disables on the radiant side because there there are a few. Maybe maybe carrying a dust on this Ricky, like um, you know this Quillen Blade, like how how much good is it really doing you at this uh, stage of the game? I think uh, a dust or something like that would be much more much more useful to try to secure a kill until the invoker. Lich, farming the jungle, casual. Well, the rest of the scene is trying to push a tier two. Oh, Ricky jumping onto the lion. Just, yeah, these supports are just food for this Ricky. Checks out the trade. Oh, he gets silenced just in time and the cold snap. Not able to cast it just in time. Looks like he is going to end up going down for going for the lion kill. But this invoker is in quite a bit of trouble. Hoof stump is actually going to connect double edge. Curse crown. Stun coming through. It's going to connect. He puts that ice wall down to try to create a little bit of space. Is he actually going to be able to get out? No. Swap, but... Oh no! He's actually gonna be able to get away. He actually gets away. And they get the return kill onto the centaur. Rupture is gonna come through on the Void Spirit. Nice attempt at the TP, but not quite enough. The Invoker is gonna be there with the tornado. And now the next one in trouble is gonna be this Willow. Silence coming through. Deafening Blast. Blood right, not even needed. They're gonna get the kill. Wow, that was really unfortunate. They don't get the kill into the invoker. And it was really good by the vengeful spirit. Uh, you know, he gets a vision of the invoker, swaps him. But the problem was he swapped him around here. And he, there was an ice wall down here. And his team was already almost either either almost past the ice wall or on top of the ice wall. So when the vengeful, sur vengeful spirit swapped here, it's like... They were almost already over past the wall, so they had to go again through the ice wall and allowing the invoker to actually get out. Quite unfortunate there. If they managed to feel, find the kill onto the invoker, that's a completely different fight there. And it looks like they're going to push the tier 2 now. Bristleback frontlining. And the creeps. Yeah, there's not much the, the rating can do, really. This, <laughs> this Lich is still farming. Interesting. So it's basically a 4v5. Not sure if there's been some disagreements or, you know, arguments coming through on the side of the of the Radiant, but this Lich is jungling. <laughs> Looks like you're gonna go into the tier 2 bottom. This Invoker right clicks for quite a bit with this alacrity. Tier 2 gonna end up going down, um, it's just a matter of time before the Radiant actually, they're actually gonna go into the high ground, surprising. It looks like they feel quite confident going up the high ground. Rupture, Spike. Wow, the Vengeful Spirit trying to save his boy with the swap, but I'm not sure that m there's much that could have been done for your boy there. Ether Remnant, Yule Scepter, Ricky is in the dip of things, it's gonna kill the Lion, Tricks of the Trade. The good vision of the of the Bloodseeker is pretty big. I see the Bloodseeker. This Ricky's on top of the Bloodseeker. Bloodseeker is gonna end up going down. Buyback coming through from the Centaur and Bristleback, you know, behind tier three is just gonna end up going down. You know, when you get focused by the whole enemy team, that's gonna be way more than enough damage to actually finish you off. Nice little use up there there by the Void Spirit dodging the meteor. But yeah, very nice kills by the by the Dire. Definitely very needed kills because the Radiant were getting away with quite a bit. This Ricky onto the Lich. And yeah, this, these supports right now this game are just absolute food for the Ricky. Like, this, this Lich didn't even get time to pop Glimmer Cape. Or he was just caught off guard and didn't pop it. Uh oh. Where did this happen? Let's go back a little bit. Boom. Let's see. Oh no, this invokers. Silence. Doesn't even... Literally just silence, cold snap, and that's it. That's literally all he needed. Cold snap, alacrity. Clicks him down. A little bit unfortunate. 
is gonna capture the outpost. Very nice. Get that EXP for his team, and uh, Bristleback's actually gonna start TPing over there to gain some more control of the dire jungle. Let's see, it's like Willow's gonna be going for the glimmer. This lion already has his blink going for the ghost scepter next. Yeah, I was about to point that out. Like this lion and these uh, and this lich needs uh, they need a ghost scepter ASAP. Yule scepter works as well, same purpose. But yeah, they need. They need uh, some type of item so that when the Ricky gets on top of them, they, they just don't blow up immediately. Hmm. This uh, Bristleback going for the SNY. Okay. Agnum Scepter next for the Void Spirit. That's going to be very nice. That's going to be quite a big item because this Invoker doesn't have any defensive items really. He has the, I mean, he has a Ghost Scepter, he has a Blink, but he doesn't have anything against the Silence. So if this Void Spirit is able to get on top of this Invoker and actually uh, get a Silence off of him, this Invoker can be in quite a bit of trouble. Same thing for this Lion. This Lich, not so much, because he's going to go for the Yule Scepter. So if the Void Spirit does jump on him, he can just Yule, perch that Silence off, and then uh, be able to cast his spells again. Same thing for the Bloodseeker. Bloodseeker, if he gets silenced, he could be in a little bit of trouble, but not as much as the Invoker or the supports. Tornado is going to come through, Meatball. It's going to connect, and then the silence is going to be on top of there as well. That's going to be a dive for the Centaur. Ricky trying to jump into the void onto the Invoker, but the Invoker already has his Ghost Scepter popped. But Terrorize is going to land, so he's not going to be able to do anything. Try to trade. Going to connect onto the Lion. They're going to kill onto the Lion, and now the Bristleback is his next target. He is alone. So they can definitely turn around and get that kill, and they will. Double kill for the Ricky. Very nice. Very nice jump in by the Ricky, jumping into the to the Invoker, forcing his Ghost Scepter to come off, and then the Willow very big terrorize there, terrorizing. I think I think he hit the Lion and the and the Invoker. I'm not sure if he hit both, but I know he hit the Invoker for sure. Invoker wasn't able to do anything, he was terrorized, and then the Ricky's just like, alright, cool, I'm just gonna go on this Invoker, gets a kill into the Invoker, then jumps onto the Lion next, boom. Nice easy team fight. And then they move on to the Bristleback, which is pretty much alone, like, um, Bloodseeker was nowhere to be seen, and this Lich was probably jung <laughs> jungling somewhere in the right inside of the map. So, you know, the... I'm not sure what the what their net worth lead was before this fight. I'm sure it dipped quite a bit, but now it's only 4k, and I'm sure it was around 8k, 6k, 6k. But like, uh, if the rating keep giving keep keep giving up these fights, it's gonna be it's gonna be quite troublesome for them. So we'll see if they uh, get their game together and actually start making some 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 moves together as a team because that last move was only it's only three heroes. Like uh, you know you're. Your Lich was farming the jungle, and then your Bloodseeker was also farming the jungle, and then you're you're deciding to push high ground. Um, like uh, this uh, this radiant team needs to coordinate a little bit better when they when they go for these pushes, because you know they they were able to get away with them in the earlier poses of the game. You know, like 10, 15 minutes in, but now that the heroes have more items and they're a little bit stronger. And they're pretty much right next to the tier three. You you can't go for those uh, those same plays. You need to be a little bit more organized. Let's see what the Rick is going for. He's, he's almost got his BKB. It's uh, yeah, it's gonna be scary for this Invoker because this Invoker has um, pretty much nothing uh, besides the Ghost Scepter. Smoke movement coming through from the Dire. Looks like they want to gain back some map control. And they're actually uh, painting over the the radiant triangle, so we'll see if they go there. Looks like they're gonna find the lich first. No detection. Oh, there it is. Lion blinking into the middle of things. Maybe not the best thing. The rest of the enemy team is there. Tricky is gonna jump onto the onto the invoker. Invoker is gonna use himself. Oh no, that wasn't even that wasn't the invoker that used himself. That was the void spirit. Use him for the setup. Bristleback, a little bit of trouble, but <laughs> it's actually gonna get the kill onto the, onto the. <laughs> Ricky jumping in. He needs to be a little bit careful. He's kind of low, but yeah, that was funny. The eventual spirit and the center war runner end up going down there because of the just of the quill sprays. Uh, yeah, this Bristleback's pretty massive too. He's um, quite a bit of a problem right now. 
they don't have um, still no yeah like um, they have no magical burst they have no break mechanic they have no scotty uh, this bristleback's just uh, having a pretty free game there's no there's no real counters to him this game and the bristleback's a pretty strong hero as you saw by the fight you know just you're like okay bristleback's alone let's just start focusing him down and then you know he shoots one quill spray then you know he procs uh, he procs his passive once and he pops another quill spray then he procs his uh, passive another two times and you have like four or five stacks of quill sprays on you and then like the next quill spray does more than like 200 300 damage like damn yeah i'd definitely like to see maybe some type of break mechanic or some type of item to limit the region on this on this bristleback because if they don't it's definitely gonna be troublesome moving forward especially for this ricky like this ricky is not able to chunk him down in like you know one two hits it's gonna take a few hits and ricky's uh hero with quite low hp and once he starts getting those cool sprays up uh those are gonna hurt looks like he's gonna find the lion ghost up they're gonna be popped by a lion only gonna buy him a little bit more time oh actually nice little blink away there he's gonna be able to get away Looks like this is the first, um, or the second. Last last one was also a 5-1-5. But yeah, uh, one of the first uh, few 5-1-5s that we're gonna have this game. Looks like Invokers has his shard ready. Mm, is he going BKB on this Blood Seeker? Yes, he is. Recognizes that this uh, Void Spirit is being a little bit too troublesome. With the Zeal Scepter and Ether, Ether Remnant, especially with the Silence as well. Radiant are gonna move on to the Roche Pit. Look, I, I think the, the Dire know. And if they wanna contest this, they need to go now. They're gonna go into the Invoker. Invoker is just standing outside of the pit. Ether Remnant is gonna connect onto him. Looks like he's gonna end up going down, but they do get the Aegis. Bye bye coming through by the Invoker. Lion is gonna end up going down to the Ricky there. Stomp. Bloodseeker gonna end up going down. Two buybacks coming through by the side of Radiant. Nice little chain frost there, connecting quite a bit of damage. Terrorize gonna come through, but not gonna connect onto anything. Ventral Spirit gonna end up going down. Ricky in quite a bit of trouble. Is dropping quite low. Voice Spirit gonna have to Ether Step to go it away. Ooh, Bloodseeker dropping quite low. He's already used his Aegis. They're gonna get a kill on the kill onto the Bloodseeker. Nice body back there by the Ventral Spirit, setting up the kill onto the, onto the Bloodseeker. This Ricky duking it out with the Invoker. Ventral Spirit is gonna die back, unfortunately, and Ricky's just gonna get away. Wow, uh, what a hectic fight. <laughs> what a hectic fight. Uh, the Invoker just, you know, standing outside of the pit to try to buy, like, you know, just to zone out the enemy, I guess. But I definitely think the, the one standing in his position should have been the Bristleback. You know, Invoker is just too juicy of a target, you know, you jump on him, he pops the Ghost Scepter, and then after the Ghost Scepter, he pretty much has nothing left in the tank. They end up killing him, but massive buyback coming through onto that fight, and a lot of the Radiant heroes are able to rejoin onto the fight and turn the fight around. I think, how many buybacks do we have? Um... can't actually see because there were too many kills <laughs> but yeah I think it was uh, at least three or four buybacks during that fight it was a little bit unfortunate that the Bloodseeker lost his Aegis and then died again it's like this Ricky is being too much of a nuisance like you know he's able to just come in come out get in get out get in get out so yeah this Bristleback is Shiva this Bristleback is fat Oh, what's this called? Assimilate. Yeah, I, I messed that up. I said as, uh, Astral Step when uh, when it was really the Assimilate when he was getting away. But yeah, these fights these fights are being super active. You know, you have a fight going on over here, then another fight going on over here. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Let's see, um, Ricky gonna be going for the Super Basher next. Looks like this Bristleback is going to change this item from um, SNY to Heaven's Hologrid. Definitely very needed. Especially, I mean, pretty much it's for the Ricky. If you're able to, you know, disable the Ricky for three seconds and get him, stop him to, from right clicking, 
That's pretty good, man. Let's see. Borka going for the BKB, very nice, very needed for sure. Because every time he's getting jumped from by the by the voice spirit and silence, like he just can't do anything. Like he has no defensive item to actually try to get away. But now that he has his BKB, he will he'll be able to do something. He's gonna gonna be so helpless if he gets jumped on by the void spirit and the Ricky. Let's see, Basher looks like he's gonna be going for the SNY and then the shard next. Very nice shard for Bloodseeker. See, Aeon disc for the lion, very nice. He's <laughs> this man's done dying. He doesn't want to get jumped on anymore. But speaking of getting jumped on, this Bloodseeker trying to walk up the high ground, but he just ends up finding five dire heroes. A stampede is gonna get popped. This Bristleback's in the middle of things. BKB is gonna get popped by an invoker. Gonna blink on top of the eventual spirit, finish off that kill. BKB is still running for another one or two seconds. It's gonna run out now. And now he's gonna be in trouble. Nice little silence coming through onto the invoker again. Nice little tricks of the trade to dodge out the EMP there, but Bloodseeker's there. Lion Finger is gonna be there. Gonna find a kill into the Void Spirit. Nice buyback by the Bloodseeker there. Coming back into the fight, finishing off the kill onto the <laughs> onto the Void Spirit. But this Ricky is just coming back in, finishing off the kill those in those uh, support kills. It looks like we have a double buyback from the Dire. So they wanna, um, they wanna defend this. They know that the Bloodseeker already bought back. And if he dies again, then the the Reigns are gonna be in trouble. But yeah, wow, what a what a fight! Nice buyback by the Bloodseeker for sure, turning things around there. This Bristleback, I'm not sure. I'm not sure this is kill boys. Spike coming through onto the Void Spirit. Void Spirit is gonna jump onto the lion. It's gonna pop the Ghost Scepter, but it's only gonna buy you a little bit more time. This Bristleback's a little bit in no man's land, but some of the dire heroes have quite a bit of uh cool sprays on him. Silence coming through, Curse Crown. Trying to bring him down. They have the damage, they're gonna be able to bring him down. Very nice. Like yeah, he was in the, he was pretty much in the middle of nowhere. He had all that hero surrounding him. Some of these, yeah, some of these uh, die heroes dropping a little bit too low, but they're able to get the kill into the bristle back. Very nice. And now onto the tier two they go. Ah. See, oh Kaya coming through from the voice spirit. It looks like he's gonna be turning that into his sage and Kaya. Okay. <clears throat> Solar credit completed with a Vladimir's offering. Very nice. This vengeful spirit really going for those um, team auras and then Solar Crest. Very nice item to either put on the enemies or put on the Ricky to provide that extra um, that extra evasion and attack speed, which can be quite useful. Centaur actually going for the axe. What is it? Uh... Oh, I see. Okay, so they can run through obstacles and uh, damage, damage reduction, and one second uh, adds one second duration. Okay. Quickening charm for the dire. Hmm. Nice little four staff there. Let's see what the yeah go set their use glimmer. Oh, he's actually this invoker. I actually even going for the A on this as well. Really going for those defensive items. Like yeah, he, he really doesn't want to die either. He's really sick of this uh, this void spirit and uh, Ricky just being able to get on top of him. See this lion has oh he's close to his A on disc. Lich actually even going for the BKB. Nice smoke movement coming through from the dire. 
Invading the enemy triangle. Ricky leading the charge. Oh, if they can find the invoker, that's gonna be a pretty big kill. He doesn't have his A on this yet. Wow. Nice ghost walks, juking it out into the trees. He's just gonna be able to get away. Very nice. It's actually in. There was detection on some of their heroes, but they didn't decide to pop the dust, and invoker is able to get away. And it looks like the Radiant are on the retreat, but this lion decides to stick around a little bit, do a little bit of de warding, but might end up paying with life for it. And on this is gonna come through, hoof stomp a little bit off the mark, swap coming through onto the bristle back. Ooh, this Ricky jumping onto the invoker, invoker has to try to back away. Now, the next target is the Bloodseeker. BKB is gonna get popped, but the Basher, 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 canceling the TP there. And this, uh, yeah, this Bloodseeker has no buyback. Nice Ether Remnant. Bristleback gonna get focused down. You might be chunky, but. What? Oh, no way! The cool sprays! Getting the kill on both of the supports. And uh, the center war running dropping down as well. This, uh. This invoker now in a little bit of trouble though needs to start running away. He's gonna use scepter. Actually, that wasn't the use. That wasn't his use scepter. That was a voice for use scepter him there. They're able to find the kill though, but a little bit of a questionable use scepter there. Now you don't have use scepter for yourself. This Ricky is there to back him up. Ooh, Ether Remnant a little bit off the mark, but this Ricky is st staying right on top of this invoker. Nice little dart. Tricks of the trade. Gonna be able to find the kill. That's a dieback onto the invoker. But this voice spirit might be in a little bit of trouble. Ether step. Not enough. The chain for us is gonna follow him up through and <laughs> tape coming through the invoker's way. Very nice. He's been waiting 40 minutes for that. <laughs> but wow, what a fight! This um, yeah, these supports and uh, including I mean at this point this uh, centaur is like uh, you know a glorified position four. He needs to be you know they need to be careful with this when you start focusing down this bristle bag when basically like. This Bristleback was here alone, and you know the, the entire Radiant team were hitting him. But you know the Bristleback's turn; everyone's hitting his back, and uh, they're proccing the the Cool Spray stacks, and like pretty much both of the supports going down there in the initial you know engagement of trying to focus on the Bristleback, and then the Bristleback once the Invoker shows up, and then the Ricky and the Voice Spirit jump onto the, the Invoker and leave the Centaur there alone versus the Bristleback. The centaur has no chance of surviving there and ends up going down as well. Yeah, they need to be they need to be a little bit careful when they focus on the bristleback. Like, either make sure that there's no one in the vicinity so that you know the fight can't actually get turned around, and uh, or you know try to build some items to limit his effectiveness. Looks like the Ricky is gonna get the Scotty to try to limit some of that. Bristle back into in the Roche pit, trying to finish off Roche, but Chris Crown, Bramble. And ooh, they find the bristle back. Looks like he's gonna buy back immediately. Uh the big saving grace there was that they had the bedlam there. That was um that was quite a bit of damage. That magic damage on the bedlam, not uh not to be messed around with. Lion does have the A on this guy, he has the ghost scepter, so he's gonna be A okay. Every single time he gets jumped by uh, by the Ricky, as long as he has those two off cooldown, he should be A okay. This Invoker actually BOTing onto the top wave. He's gonna jump aggressively onto the onto the eventual spirit, but he's in a lot of trouble. He's not gonna end up going down. That's <laughs> uh this uh <laughs> Yep, yep, yep. You tip, you better expect some tips back. They lose the Invoker and now the the Radiant are forced to retreat from the Roche Pit because they can't take this fight. Like, uh, Invoker, pretty big part of their team fight, but I like they're thinking about it, of going back in. Pick up the Aegis, pick up the Aegis. Nice, they pick up the Aegis. They probably wanted it on the Ricky, but Ricky was a little bit too slow dropping his items. Very nice, they claim the Aegis. I think that, that I mean... Yeah, sure. You're 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 happy with the Aegis. You want the Aegis, but you're much happier them not having the Aegis. I, I think that was uh, the kind of rush this was. It was more of a we don't want them to have the Aegis, so we'll just take it for ourselves. We'll see if they decide to make uh, a move uh, with this Aegis. This Dire team is make, making some really good moves all throughout the game. You know, like. Maybe not the <laughs> maybe not at the beginning of the game when they get a little bit uh, a little bit stomped, but 
afterwards, you know, the smoke, five man smoke movements coming through, ganking some key heroes, you know, or is what has been able to put him back into the back into the game and now to a 4K network lead. DD over by the bot side of the river. So they're gonna push down this um, tier one tower. Uh, that is one thing that um, that the Dyer are kind of lacking is the tower push. They they don't really have any heroes that really hit the hit towers very well. No, this Lich Glimmer just not quite uh, not quite there in time. And I mean, you know, he's got he's got two defensive items. You know, he doesn't pop. He only pops one of them. I mean, he doesn't have two. He has got three defensive items. He only pops one of them, and the one with the with the most delay. So, a little bit of a blunder there. Oh my God, it's Ricky double damage. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. That's scary. They managed to find the, uh, you know, a core or another hero with this double damage. They can really do some work. But it looks like they're just gonna back up. The Void Spirit is pushing down the bot wave. Oh, that's so unfortunate. That ward is gonna get dewarded soon. Nice little ward there, giving the vision, giving the ambition of the triangle there. That's oof. That ward just, that sentry just like slightly off the mark from the observer that the dire have there. A little bit unfortunate there. And this completed by the Invoker. Very nice. Looks like you're going for the Bloodthorn next. Let's see BKB on the Bristleback. Okay. It's, uh, how many last hits? 89 last hits. Interesting. I actually guess less than a lion. Interesting. But like, it seems like every single time I look at this Lich, he's like farming. He's farming jungle. So. Onto the tier 2 they go, looks like the Rainy have no no intention of actually defending this. Smoke movement, oh okay never mind. it's just an ninja gear on the Rinky, okay. Blood right to try to deep push a little bit. Are they going to try to go for this? Looks like they're not. They're just going to back up, looks like they're pretty happy with what they got. I'm gonna start TPing on, TPing on back to try to defend the, this top wave pushing in. Let's see. Agonim Scepter coming through into the Eventual Spirit. Very nice. Uh, let's see what I see. Yeah. Yeah, Eventual Spirit gameplay. Yeah. Uh, I see. Well, that's pretty cool, Ags. See this invoker. I'm just gonna TP on out. He's a oh, uh, that ether remnant. We're kind of close. Ricky does have the sky completed. Very nice. Good item versus the bristleback. Trying to pre uh, to prevent some of his uh, region coming through. It's actually almost level thirty, so he'll be able to have the two extra talents that he's missing. Lion going for the BKB, Lich as well going for the BKB, Let's see, Butterfly actually for the Bloodseeker, very nice item, yeah, because I don't think this Ricky is going to be able to get uh, the Fusil, I mean uh, MKB anytime soon, since he just committed for the Scotty, nice uh, Tornado actually connecting onto the Ricky, but they didn't have Vision and uh, they didn't actually want to go for it, looks like Aegis is going to get claimed, so... The Radiant can actually try to take a fight. Do they have a gem again? Can I actually see if they have a gem on... Uh... Oh, I can't actually see, okay. That's unfortunate. But... Yeah, the gem that the that the Willow has right now, that was, uh, I think that was from the Invoker. Propietario, Blood Bave, who's Blood Bave? Yeah, actually, Bristleback bought it. Okay. Nice. Smoke movement coming through from the Dire. 
This invoker is play pushing top. Ooh, they actually connect on their on their scan. So it looks like they're just gonna back up, chip, chill up on the high ground, chill behind the tower. See if they find anything. It's a lot of vision around this uh, this triangle here from the radiant. I am sticking around. Doesn't actually. Oh, does see the Ricky now? Actually, he had. I think he had vision of him the whole time, um, but just decided to blink out until the very last second for a dramatic effect. This invoker shoving down the bot wave. Trying to split the map. Good job. Same thing for this uh, for this Bloodseeker. They had no intention of actually defending this, so they're just gonna have to split the map. These uh, these four spirits are actually you know doing. They get the tower. Doing quite a bit of work. Ooh, that's a nice uh, that's a nice shard on the willow. <laughs> nice little stack. A little bit unfortunate that the. That the smoke movement from the dire didn't actually connect onto anything. It was a good opportunity to, you know, get the ball rolling again. But uh, they had to TP on back, deal with the uh, with the split push from the invoker and the bloodseeker. Do we actually have a smoke on anyone? They don't. So it's probably yeah. I can't actually see. It's probably on on cooldown or something. Do you have a smoke on any of their radiant um, supports? No, we don't. I actually have not seen, or not that I remember. Uh, I don't remember the last time a, the radiant make a smoke movement, so a little bit unfortunate there. Maybe they could uh, try to smoke out and try to catch the um, the dire heroes off guard, because you know there are there are times when they're split up, you know, and that's the times when you could um, try to go for a smoke movement. Especially, you know, during the earlier phases of the game, they didn't quite do that when they had, you know, good control of the map, good vision of the enemy side of the jungle. But now it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit harder than it was um, maybe 20 minutes ago or something like that. Well, Roshan just spawned in, and Centaur might have actually caught a uh, sight of that. I mean, a sip of water. Apologies. <laughs> this lich close to his BKB. Heart next for the bristleback. Nullifier for the Ricky. That's gonna be pretty big. Like uh, this nullifier. Like if he jumps, you know, pretty much any of these here, like, he's gonna be able to kill them because they're not gonna be able to BKB. They're not gonna be able to go scepter, Yule scepter, glimmer cape, whatever item they have. He's just gonna be able to kill them, so you um, need to look forward for that item. This Bloodseeker, also his butterfly, is gonna be pretty big because, like, Rick is pretty, like, pretty full slotted. Like, uh, I don't know what, like, maybe the, the Fusil Blade will want to give that up for the MKB, but, you know, don't really want to. Like, uh, he's gonna have the Nolan Flyer, and that's probably gonna take the slot of the cheese. And then, you know, once this Bloodseeker gets butterfly, Ricky might want to get an MKV and he might want to give up his Fusil Blade for that. We'll see. Bristleback gonna jump into the pit. Blood Rite is gonna connect on quite a few heroes. BKVs are gonna get popped. Finger coming through onto the Vengeful Spirit, but not gonna be quite enough damage. This Bloodseeker getting focused down is gonna end up going down. Does have buyback. We'll chase if he uses to use it. The Chain Frost doing quite a bit of damage, jumping around. This Bristleback. Kind of a no man's land. Oh, stomp a little bit off the mark. Ricky jumping onto the back lines, jumping onto the lion. Looks like the lich is gonna be next. But they actually don't manage to find the kill. And this bristleback actually gets a kill into the, into the eventual spirit. Sunstrike gonna come through to try to secure the kill into the Roche. They get the Roche. Let's see. Wow, oh, he actually picks up everything, this bristleback. That's his no bueno, my friend. There goes the Aegis. Is he gonna put the cheese into his inventory? He is, what a player. Tornado. Actually gonna jump the invoker, but the A on this is gonna get popped. BKB is also gonna get popped. This Ricky is disarmed. He can't do any really do anything right now. 
And this bristle back's on too high of an HP right now. It looks like the Ricky is gonna pop the cheese. Has four cool sprays on him. And he's gonna try to jump the bristle back. I'm not sure this is the greatest target, but they might bring him down. Stomp a little bit off the mark there. BKB is gonna get popped. Does have the cheese ready to be popped. Any second? Yep, pops it now. And they find the kill into the bristle bag. Very nice. Uh, I definitely think that uh, these radiant heroes should play around their bristle bag a little bit more. Like you know, like don't be scared to bait them. Like I mean, they're obviously they're not just baiting him they're like leaving him behind but you know you could bait him play around him a little bit more you know like uh when they start committing heavily on him like that like uh that's when invoker could really try to go in or some of the supports nice little blink away dodging the blink spike from the lion but yeah it's um yeah they need to play around their bristleback a lot more because you know it takes he takes quite a bit to kill, like he's not an easy kill. It really takes quite a bit of uh, resources from the from Dyer to actually bring down the bristle back. And I think that would open quite a bit of an opportunity for the uh, for the raiding heroes to try to turn around. But yeah, it's like I said before, like uh, the the radiant don't really seem to be on uh, like on the same page in a lot of these fights and like these these die heroes they're always they're they're like they're always on the same page. They're very coordinated. They're making some good movements. Let's see, this Bloodseeker actually holding on to uh, his buyback. Doesn't want to commit for the butterfly just yet. Let's see, bristleback, still going for that hard. Nice, Vengeful Spirit going for the Silver Edge, recognizing that they need some type of break. Like, uh, it's 55 minutes into the game, and this uh, Bristleback's already been too much of a nuisance. It's time to shut him down. DD on the butt side of the river. Sheepstick gonna be coming through from the Void Spirit. Does have his BOTs delivered to him. Yeah, this voice player has been able to catch up very nicely, considering uh, the kind of st the kind of start he had. I heard a use up there somewhere. Interesting. Looks like uh, the lion is actually gonna be going for the for the e blade. Okay, very nice. Definitely a good item. You know, you can e blade the enemy you're gonna finger, or you could e blade one of your teammates to try to save him when they're getting jumped by the Ricky. Invoker is play pushing the top wave. Definitely feel like uh, you know if the dire if the dire want to push, they need to push now while the invokers up top. They're gonna start focusing on the bristle back. Bloodseeker and invoker are still not there. Look like at Bloodseeker is gonna start TPing on back. Voice paper trying to jump in. A lot of BKB is getting popped. Lion is gonna get popped. Bristle back is gonna get swapped on. Abyssal Blade, a Cataclysm, Chain Frost doing quite a bit of damage, now this Voice Spirit in a, lot of, in a lot of trouble, he doesn't have BKB, he doesn't have Yule Scepter, he's gonna end up going down. Wow, what a fight. A lot of BKB is getting popped at, a lot of uh, spells getting used, but not really that many kills. They um, they again focus the this Bristle back and like, you know what a break mechanic, oh, hold that thought, Ricky. Going on to the Bloodseeker. Bloodseeker dropping quite low. It's gonna end up going down. Abyssal Blade. Dropping onto the Invoker. Nice little cloud to silence him. Playing around the Ice Wall, but they actually. They guess wrong. They don't have detection. The, the Invoker had his dust in his backpack. Oh. Actually puts his dust in his inventory now. And Ricky's just gonna back up. He's gonna pop the. Just gonna pop the Ninja Gear. But yeah, very nicely played by the by Ricky, you know, like lurking around in the shadows. Uh, you know, the uh, Bloodseeker thought he was quite safe. He was around his team, tries to capture the outpost, and Ricky's like, mm -mm, not happening. You're not getting that for free. Gets the kill onto the onto the Bloodseeker, and then uh, jukes out uh, the Invoker and the and the Bristleback pretty nicely. You know, he he didn't run straight uh, down to the river like uh, you know I I would have expected as well. And the the Invoker and the Bristleback expected. He just kind of just 
hung around back, chilled around the ice wall, even though he was taking damage, he just hung around there and he ends up getting away. Very nice by the rookie. Yeah, now this uh, this invoker has his uh, dust permanently out, and he's not switch switching out his ghost scepter and his dust. They definitely like there's no that's a funny thing like um, you know earlier on in the in the game because the heroes had more items I mean le less items apologies the heroes had less items so they had more slots to you know to hold dust sentries gems things like that but now that it's 59 minutes into the game and pretty much even position fives are starting to get five slotted like the detection is starting to become a big issue and this Ricky's thriving off of it quite nicely yeah, as you could see by that uh, fight off bottom they really had no vision of uh, the Ricky so the Ricky's just able to you know jump in and out do as he pleases we do have a DC so as soon as the what never mind he reconnects immediately so there's no need to cut the video <laughs> I was about to cut the video but hey quick re-C so hey we're back just like that. Let's see. Moonshard gonna be next for the Ricky. I mean, honestly, at this point of the game, 60 minutes into the game, you could probably go for the Agonist Blessing. Like, even though Axe is not what it used to be, I mean, it's an extra item that you could go for. This Invoker actually coming over here on top wave. Does he have his dust out? He does have his dust out. Invoker did have the ghost walk ready, so he's gonna be A-OK. -okay. Does bait out the BKB from the Ricky, so if the Ricky actually decides to stick around, oh, Blink away, TP, it's gonna be okay. But yeah, I was, I was about to say, if this Ricky actually starts farming the wave and, uh, you know, the Invoker manages to stick around, he could definitely get the kill into the Ricky. He had, the, he had his dust out and the Ricky had no BKB, so... Very really nicely recognized by the Ricky also like uh, you know not going back into the creep wave and you know making the making an easy setup for the invoker just kept hunting for the invoker and forcing him to actually get out. Uh, it's gonna be a while until this bench actually gets this um, the silver edge. Uh, I definitely like it would have been nice to see it on uh, another hero or some type of break mechanic on the I don't know, here, I mean, it doesn't make sense to build break on a Ricky. Like, uh, especially, I, it doesn't make sense to build Silver Edge. But, you know, an urn or something like that would have been nicer on the side of the, on the side of the dart earlier on. Tier 5 items coming through. Let's see what the dire have for the neutrals. Uh, the Book of the Dead, very nice. Stygian Desolator. Oh, Fallen Sky, that's a nice one. And then the the book of shadows. Let's see what we have for the radiant. Boom. Apex. Okay. Apex for the lion. Interesting. Mirror shield for the bristleback. That's a really nice item. Sturgeon desolator and then the book of shadows. Yeah, that um, that mirror shield is actually nuts. Uh, this item is actually nuts. It's uh, yeah, it's pretty good, man. It's pretty good. Fallen Sky is also a pretty good item, but I definitely think the out of all the tier five items, the Bristleback got the the better round of that. Roshan is back up, and the Ricky does know that since he has illusions chilling there. Looks like the Radiant are gonna check into the Rosh pit soon. Bristleback steps in, then the Rosh is up. It looks like they're actually gonna try to do it. Interesting. I mean, they don't. This uh, this Willow is up. To, it's up the top. But it looks like the, yep, the Dire no. They jump onto the Bloodseeker immediately. He's getting bashed, bashed again. It's gonna end up going down. Does have the buyback and it's gonna use it. He wants to fight for this Rush Pit. Lich popping his BKB, but it's gonna end up going down regardless. Cataclysm coming through. Nice little dodge from the Willow to dodge that out. Bristleback in no man's land, getting surrounded by everyone. Looks like Voice Spirit is gonna TP out. Nice little basher there. Super bad to actually cancel the TP and now the Centaur War Runner looks like to be in quite a bit of trouble. Where's this Ricky? Ricky trying to deal with the split push coming from the Invoker, but Invoker is just gonna ghost walk out. Yeah, he's gonna be able to make it out. In the meanwhile, this um this Bloodseeker managing to chase down this um this vengeful spirit. 
Looks like the centaur did actually buy back. This, uh, yeah, this, this Bloodseeker in quite a bit of trouble. Does try to turn around and fight, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure you're gonna be able to. But there's not much else you can do. Mirror shield reflecting, actually TPing him to the, the Bristleback TPing him to the Ricky. Bristleback getting focused down. There's no break. There's no nothing. They see the Invoker. He jumps up to that immediately. Nice double edge onto the wow. Double edge and then the uh, resonant pulse enough to bring him down. Now this bristleback looks to be what? Maybe not. Maybe not. Ether remnant gonna connect. Ricky trying to chip away as much as he can. He should be a little bit careful. Looks like the invoker is gonna buy it back, and that's gonna be enough to deter the the dire heroes to keep on chasing. Roche is still there, so they could they could honestly try to look to take it, but looks like they just want to chill for now. Wow, very unfortunate that they're for the side of the Radiant that the Bloodseeker does die back there. It was a nice, it was a nice buyback, but perhaps um, chased down a little bit too much uh, here on, into the jungle, and then you know the rest of the dire heroes, three dire heroes, collapse on top of him and just uh, bring him down. Does he have his? Uh, no, he doesn't have his butterfly. Did I just hear E Blade? Yeah. E blade finger onto the ancient creeps. Casual, casual. 15 second cooldown. It's not like you care. Dyer are gonna scan and it looks like the scan is gonna connect. The sports spirit looking for something. He finds a bristle bag, but that's not really the target we wanna find. So uh, this this reading team needs to be you need to be careful because there's no buyback on the Invoker, there's no buyback on the Bloodseeker, so any if any of those two cores die, it's gonna be pretty hard taking fights. And yeah, I don't think they're gonna try to contest the Roche, like, uh, this Invoker is just split pushing. Doesn't, uh, doesn't, doesn't look that, uh, to, doesn't look like he has the intention of joining that fight anyways. Aegis is gonna come through onto the Void Spirit, she's giving to the Ricky. DD on the bot side of the river, so nice TP by the Willow to deal with the pressure from the Invoker. Centaur is dealing with top. Looks like they're gonna give the Ricky the eggs. Uh, what is the Willow eggs? I mean, honestly, honestly, the Willow eggs is not that bad either. But yeah, the. I mean, <laughs> I definitely would have liked to see the Ags on the Willow just for the memes, but I definitely think the more practical, more practical approach is to actually use it onto the uh, onto the Ricky. Scan coming through by the Radiant is gonna connect. Sim Walker constantly sending his uh, Force Spirits down here. Does have his BOTs ready, so if his team do need him, he's gonna be able to get there and uh, then just a little. Where's Spirit jumping in? It's gonna get ruptured. Cataclysm coming through, dealing uh, quite a bit of damage onto the Voice Spirit, not quite enough. Stampede is gonna come through. This Voice Spirit dropping a little bit low, but the Bloodseeker is dropping even lower. Looks like he's just gonna turn around and fight. He's pretty low, he just needed one more right click, but it looks like they're gonna find the Invoker kill instead. Lion is gonna end up falling. Voice Spirit does lose his kill, does lose his life, but that's just the Aegis. Bloodseeker gonna end up going down. And now, last, last man alive, this bristle back. Probably not gonna be long for this world. <laughs> Dude, he's taking so much to kill. Anyways, they're gonna be able to bring him down. Oh, he does have a buyback, so he buys back immediately. This, uh, yeah, they need to be a little bit careful. They got the um, voice rate is um, is quite low, and then this Ricky has uh, a few cool sprays on him. He actually got the dark reflected back onto him. Abyssal blade gonna get popped, and yeah, 
They actually managed to hold literally from like um, what looked like a GG situation, you know, where like pretty much the game was over. On buyback from one hero, one hero is basically able to hold the hold the base. That's uh, that's pretty crazy. This uh, this bristle bag really really doing work here. How is that silver edge completed? Very nice. They definitely need to try to get that off onto the onto the bristle bag. This vengeful spirit is gonna spawn over here. Doesn't want his illusion to die. Actually, it does stack that. Very nice. Boom. Spawns in. Regen is gonna take that. <laughs> uh, that's funny. That's really funny. <laughs> this lich is uh, mega griefing right now. Let's see. Dude, he actually, <laughs> he actually has so much damage. It's actually kind of crazy and kind of funny at the same time. Oh, looks like it's go time for this Ricky Rapier coming through. He's going to be selling the Fusil Blade for that. Let's see, this Bloodseeker. He actually has money for the buyback, for the buyback, for the butterfly, so not quite there, about what, like 300 gold away or something like that. Yeah, it's reason to the point where I should be having... Uh, boom, this. Nice smoke coming through. Voice period with the Invis rune. To find the bristle bag, but that's not really the kill they want to find. Is Voice Spirit gonna venture in a little deeper? They do find the lion. Lion doesn't pop this BKB yet. Has the E on this going through. He does pop the E blade onto himself. There is so much going on. Ricky going onto the Bloodseeker. Bloodseeker in quite a bit of the, quite a bit of trouble. Does have the buyback actually. Cataclysm coming through. Ricky jumping onto the lion. It's gonna find a kill onto the lion. Now this bristleback. They find a kill onto this bristleback. That's quite big. This this guy doesn't have buyback. This this Ricky needs to be a little bit careful. Three, 13 uh, cool sprays onto him. Needs to wait a little bit for that. Wow! Wow! Literally just from one jump, he's dead. Ricky still has a BKB, so it's gonna jump away. Cataclysm coming through. The centaur is gonna end up going down there. So he's gonna buy back. And yeah, it looks like that's gonna be the end of that. Wow, <laughs> what a what a fight! That was actually so crazy. Like uh, so split up. There are literally like um, like at least two or three fights going on at the same time during that fight. That was a little bit um, yeah, a little bit too much for me. Let's see. Zimboker does have his buyback again, so if he does die, he'll be able to have that. Let's see. Ooh, this Invoker. Wow. He's able to literally melt him from 80% HP to 0 HP. His uh, A on this was on cooldown, so he's able to find that kill. Very nice. This invoker even has the refresher orb. I didn't actually quite see that. That's nice. Ricky gonna TP onto the bottom outpost.
I haven't seen a I haven't seen a break onto the Bristlebacks since this uh, since this Vengeful Spirit got his uh, his silver. Edge, so uh, I'd kind of like to see that. Stampede is gonna get popped. They're gonna jump up to the line, but it's a uh, a on this is gonna pop. Also, this Ghost Scepter. Now he pops the BKB. Terrorize is gonna come through. Connects onto the both of the ports, so they're gonna go back to Fountain. Cataclysm coming through, not doing a lot of damage. Refresh Orb, Cataclysm coming through again. Vengeful Spirit dropping quite low. That's a Crimson Guard, but it's gonna end up dropping down anyways. Ricky gonna jump up the line, gonna finish out that kill. <laughs> Dark getting reflected onto the Ricky. Jumping onto the Willow. This uh, Chain Frost bouncing around, doing quite a bit of damage. The Centaur in pretty deep. Doesn't have Stampede. They put they do put the the maze to try to slow them down. Oh, the centaur are actually taking so much. War Spirit gonna jump onto the bristlebag. Bristlebag actually has no buyback, so if they can find the kill onto that, that would be quite big. Oh, they find they find Invoker. Invoker has actually no buyback. Bloodseeker does buy back. This might be it, boys. Terrorize coming through. Onto the Bristleback. Connects onto the Bristleback, but not the Bloodseeker. Bloodseeker dropping quite low. It's going to end up going down. Bristleback passes BKB, but this is looking like a pretty over game. I don't think you're going to be able to defend it all by your lonesome self. <laughs> he does get broken, but they're just ignoring him. They're just clicking the throne. <laughs> they're just kiting him around and clicking the throne. I don't care about him. I don't care. <laughs> they're gonna uh, end up taking the game. Wow. What a game. Very drawn out, for sure. Um, but yeah very well played by the diary for sure like uh they had like really the only one that really had a good laning phase was this ricky but besides from that i'd say the the void spirit didn't really have a good time and i did the um, i did the centaur the ray were able to take a lead earlier on i feel like just you know from the nature of their heroes blood seeker quite strong early on uh same thing for bristleback and even bristleback was like probably the strongest hero of the other Radiant into the later portions of the game but he just wasn't quite enough to actually you know stabilize his team in the late game and the Radiant make maybe a maybe one too many mistakes in the early game you know going off like as three heroes trying to push onto the high ground while like you know Lich is farming in the jungle Bloodseeker is doing something else like yeah, not not very coordinated and definitely like uh, very well deserved victory by the Dire. They were very coordinated all throughout the game, making good uh, smoke movements coming through, even though they were behind, taking some key pickoffs and you know bringing them back into the game and they take the W. But anyways, that's it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget support the channel any way you can, whether subscribing, sharing this friend with your video or your grandma, whoever it is. However, if you're not bothered to do that, the mere fact you watch this video is good enough for me. Peace out, guys.